All right, finally some time to work on this thing today, a couple hours. Well, at least I know the, the hole ain't leaking. Gonna get this glued in. Alright, so I used the belt sander to grind out all along that edge just to clean up the glass that I put in there earlier. And then I ran the belt sander all along the transom to get ready for glass. And I cleaned up. This is going to be the side that goes up against the back of the transom. So this is all cleaned up. And I trimmed all the excess glass off the bottom that I put on a few weeks. So this is the inside, inside side of the transom core. So that's going to be the side facing that way. So I laminated this uh, a couple weeks ago um, and some people will wonder why I do it outside the boat uh, for a couple of reasons, especially with epoxy. It's a lot easier to wet out glass when it's laid flat like this. So I can just pour the epoxy on and roll it out. Whereas if it was in the boat up on the transom like that, I have to roll it all out and try to keep the material from running down and then ending up down in the bilge of the boat. So with epoxy, because it takes you know like 24 hours for it to like fully set up all that resin is going to run out of the the laminate it's going to pull it towards the bottom and you're going to end up with dry laminate on the top i've seen it in boats a lot where at the top the glass is all dry when you grind it out because it all the gravity is pulling it all the way down and especially with epoxy because it takes a long time to kick um you're going to end up with it all coming down this way additionally it's better to laminate your coring material out side here flat and I'll show you why so if you look at the transom of this boat it's hard to see but it bends a little bit because when I remove the coring from here you lose all the the coring strength in the transom so if I didn't glass this first before I put it in I would have to put two by fours along the back here and screw it to bring this back in square because if I let it go like that the transom is gonna is gonna be curved so because I already laminated this and I have the two pieces of coring glued together plus the lamination, this is not going to bend. So I can put this into the boat and I can either clamp it. I have transom clamps, but because I have to fare out the back of the transom anyways, so all these holes and everything, I'm just going to send screws through from the front side with some washers. And this, this solid piece right here is going to pull this transom tight up against the back side of that. And that would solve me having to square this all up because I know this is square. And when I put it in there and screw it in, it's going to pull this forward and square it all up. And then it's going to dry solid and straight. All right, so I knew I was going to have an issue with the inside edge of this coring, not pushing all the way up against the transom because right there I added glass. So I, I ground it down the best that I could, but there's still a little bit of glass right here that's making it so that that coring won't sit flush with the transom and I know that because I just set it in there and then when I looked through the opening for the drain hole I could see that the coring wasn't pushed up flush against the glass so what I'm doing is taking a round over bit and I'm going to put a big round over all along the inside edge so that'll give some clearance and allow that coring to go straight up against the back of the transom all right so I just did a test fit I put it in there and shifted it up as high as it could go so I would get the most clearance along the bottom. And I put a screw in the top and the bottom so you can see right here. Sent the screw through. And now if I look in, I can see that the coring is perfectly up against the transom. So down here on the near the, uh, the opening, it's a little bit off. Um, but once I put the screws in and draw it in, it's super 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 close i mean the epoxy is going to take up that gap but i'm um, gonna try to get a little bit closer i might need to trim this pvc a little bit but all in all you can see it right there it's up nice and flush against the uh, original glass well right there it's not but i don't have any screws in there so once i put a screw in it's going to draw it in but everything on the top is flush you can see here everything is flush flush so I think it's pretty much ready to go. And also you can see now the transom is not curved like it was. Even just with those two screws 
that drew the transom into this piece here and squared it all up. It might be off just a little bit. That's because there's no screws on this side right now and why we can see a little gap here. So once I screw all these down, that's gonna square everything up. Let's make sure that it's nice and nice and straight. All right, so I was unsure if I was gonna do this step or not. Man, it looks like it's gonna rain. So I had flip-flopped for a while the past couple of days on if I was gonna put fresh glass on the inside of here. And originally I was gonna put chop strand with polyester, but I'm gonna use epoxy to glue the coring to the, so that, that didn't really make sense. So what I've decided to do is to take a piece of 1708 and I'm gonna wet it out here. I just put some paper down just to keep the coring somewhat clean. So I'm gonna wet this out here and then I'm gonna roll it up and I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna lay it onto the transom on the inside. And that's gonna, the, the epoxy with the chop strand mat. So this is 1708 and the, the, oops, chop strand mat is stitched to the back of the 1700 biax so you can use epoxy with this but it's going to take a lot of resin to wet out this piece which is fine because as soon as i get this piece in there i'm immediately going to mix up some reinforced thickened epoxy spread it onto the back of this piece with a notch trowel and then i'm going to put that right onto that wet on wet and then clamp it all together so this so the reason why I, I wanted to do that is because this is 1962 fiberglass. And I think the epoxy putty just on the back of that uh, glued to the, to the original glass would be fine, but it's not gonna hurt adding one piece of chop strand or like 1708 with epoxy just to beef this up just a little bit and create a nice bonding layer between a nice fresh piece of glass and a nice fresh piece of corn. So that's the plan. Wet this out, put it in there, and then get this um, puttied up and get that in there and clamp down. All right, got the layer 17 away in. Just went through and rolled it all out and then used the squeegee to move some of the air pockets. Um, it's tough because the air pockets tend to form around where the old uh, engine mounting brackets were and any of the screws. So just kind of try to slide the glass and get the air to go out of those pockets but that white underneath there that's the old fiberglass old dry fiberglass so i'm glad i put this down used about 32 ounces of resin to wet out this whole piece which is quite a bit for just a single piece of uh, laminate all right so the next step is getting some thickened epoxy on the back side of this um, so i got my notch trowel so i'm going to use this i think this is the quarter inch side and i'm going to use that to spread out the putty so i'm using this FDCI. This is a two to one pre-mixed reinforced epoxy putty. So they call it the trowel on fairing putty. So I will be offering this on, on boat crafters uh, very soon. I use a lot of this. I haven't used a lot of it lately because I haven't been working on boat projects. Um, but when I'm doing radius work or structural bonding or uh, some fairing where I need to fill in, uh, you know, a decent amount where I, I know that it's going to be a little bit thicker putty I go with this um, so it has some sort of reinforcement in it I don't know what it is that they put in there it's possible it might be small granite chips and that's probably way wrong but it feels like that it's kind of gritty um, when you mix it up there's some sort of grit in there that gives it um, its reinforcement strength you can kind of see it in the hardener too it looks like little granules of sand I'm not sure what's in it so um, this stuff is amazing um, it saves a lot of time mixing with silica and all that silliness. This is ready to go. Two parts this, one part that. I'm going to mix it up right on here um, with, with my uh, spreader. And then I'll take and just uh, spread it all out with this trowel, lift it up, put it in there, clamp it, and then send a bunch of screws through. Should be pretty easy. So the 1708 is still wet, which is good. I want the epoxy and this this resin and that putty i want it to all chemically cure together all right got the epoxy all mixed and trialed out i'm gonna lift this and put it in there got shit all over my hand so i gotta turn the phone off all right that's in i didn't film while i was doing it because i had epoxy all over my hands but everything's in you can see i put a row of screws there screws there screws there screws there and across I know everything is, is uptight because I can see the 
the resin squishing out there. You can see the resin squishing out from the top there. Underneath, there's resin squishing that way. Everything looks solid, solid. The transom is straightened up now because all the screws pulled it tight to the coring material. So one thing to note, if, so I have all these holes here obviously now. So one thing to note, and it might catch you off guard if you're doing this, is you wanna make sure that the screws that you have have threads that go almost all the way to the head of the screw because if they don't, what's gonna happen is your screw is gonna come through and if you only have threads on the end of the screw, when it pops through the fiberglass, your screw is just gonna spin because there's no thread to hold onto the glass. So these screws here I use, see how the thread goes kind of close to the top? So I knew in advance that when this came through, it would poke through here where there's threads. So I have some screws like this, and if it came through, it would bend super close to the end of this thread. And if it popped through, then the screw is just going to spin and you're not going to get any clamping force going this way. So I think that's pretty much going to be a wrap on this for today. Luckily, it didn't rain. Um, next step is going to be, actually, I'm not going to do anything on this for a while. Next thing I'm going to do is build the stringer. So the stringers are all going to get built with, built with polyester. Then when I have it, um, up against the transom, I'm going to tab the back half of the stringer, which will be laminated with polyester, but I'm going to tab the back end to here with epoxy because people are like, oh, what are you going to do with the, poly the polyester in the epoxy? Well, this everything in this area here will get tabbed with epoxy. This is all going to get tabbed into the hole. Um, so I'm going to run probably three strips of 1700 here all the way around and all the way up. Then the stringers will get butt up against that and that will get tabbed in there as well with epoxy and uh, then I'll finish the rest of it in polyester. So that's a wrap. Am I the only one that does that after you install the transom core? Like just double checking that, making sure it's legit.